My next guest is going to be taking on Jared Gordon at UFC Fight Night coming up here at on October 2nd. It's Joe Selecki back here on the program. Joe, how's it going? It's going good, man. On the way to training. So if you see some golden arches in the background, no, I'm not eating at McDonald's. I'm just pulled over on the way to Myrtle Beach to box. So disclaimer, my weight is good. I am not eating McDonald's. <laughs> That's good. Uh, well, I was going to say a veteran move uh, doing the interview in the car. It's quiet, good lighting. So uh, <laughs> yeah. appreciate that right off the bat, man. But uh, uh, first off, uh, Jared Gordon, obviously a notable guy, but were you a little bit surprised uh, in getting him as an opponent for two reasons? Number one, he fought at featherweight in his last fight. I know he missed weight, but still. And two, I figured you'd get a ranked guy at this point. Was that a bit of a surprise just on that end? Uh, not, not too much. I mean, just on the featherweight aspect, because, uh, you know, he was fighting there, but I think I had watched, I always try to watch the guys that fought at the UFC and ring of combat just cause that's where I fought. So I'm always like kind of a supporting them, watching out of curiosity and all that. So I remember watching and seeing that he had missed weight. So I think they had mentioned on the broadcast or somewhere leading up that he may have to bump up. So that was the surprising part, but no, like he's such a tough guy and a veteran has a winning record in the UFC. Um, so I figured that's someone I match up with, you know, I think he's a little older than me, but we're both in that middle ground in the division. So, um, you know, I, I thought, my last fight for me was an awesome fight in the sense of what I was able to go out and accomplish, but it wasn't knocking anybody's shoes off with, in the sense of the excitement of the fight. So I mm-hmm. uh, wasn't expecting anything crazy out of that. And like I always say, and what I've come to learn now is I can't control what's coming as a result. So I'm in no rush. I want to compete with the best, but Jared Gordon, you know, has proved that he's one of the best. He stayed in the UFC for years and uh, has beaten some really great guys and only lost to the very elite. So uh, this is another chance to test myself against one of the best and I'm excited to do it. And uh, before we talk about the, the matchup itself, um, I know you didn't get the result you wanted, but how cool was it being a part of John Salter's camp and in the back when he fought Gegard Mousasi, getting to go to a championship level fight like that? That must have been kind of a neat experience for you just to be a part of that. Yeah, it was awesome. You know, and I was saying in another interview is like, I, uh, you know, I'm not a, a big enough guy to be like a sparring partner or anything like that. But other than, than a jiu-jitsu partner, we do most of our conditionings together. So that's like where we're able to like really push each other and all that and have a great time. But um, I was, you know, because of COVID and the protocols, you had to be there all week. So I ended up just going and watching in the crowd, you know, and it was really cool for me just in like, I'd never been around that kind of uh, atmosphere, you know, where you're, I wasn't invested in this. I wasn't cornering. I wasn't coaching. I was invested because it was my friend, you know, and that was really cool for me to watch on the outside and see that it helped me grow, you know, while it wasn't the result that he wanted or we wanted. Um, being there, you know, when you're in it, I was trying to, I was telling, um, I think we were talking about, I can't remember, but I was saying how, you know, when you're in it, you can't see how anybody's going to see you for anything other than the guy that lost his last fight. Mm-hmm. So, but when I was sitting there cage side, I'm like, oh, wow, like, okay, yeah, nothing really changed. Like, he, he had the crack at the world title. It didn't go his way. And he was back in the gym on Monday. I was like, man, my respect for this guy just grew even more, if possible. So, um, it, it really helped me selfishly grow from watching that and going, Oh yeah. Like when you're not in the camp and you're not like in the corner and you feel like you were a part of it, you like just being removed from it. You're like, Oh yeah, he did awesome. He fought his heart out and uh, you know, one round went his way. It kind of slipped away in the second. Then the third went to Musashi and that's where it ended. But you're like, yeah, okay. Awesome. Back to work. Like you always feel like when you're in the fight that everybody's judging you. And I think that creates a lot of fear going into the fight of like unnecessary anxiety about like, Oh, I don't want to lose this fight and be a loser or this and that. And, um, watching him and watching how everyone at the team just we all look up to him so much in the gym and uh the gyms continue to grow which is awesome it's also dog jiu-jitsu and you know great things are on the horizon for him and the whole team so uh yeah it was awesome to see the amount of work he put into is uh it was incredible i've never seen anybody do something like that you know we've all done three three round fights and those camps are very different for a five round fight so watching him suffer day in and day out and push through injury and all the things that he'll never talk about uh it was incredible yeah he's the, he's the man Let's talk about Jared Gordon. Obviously, we mentioned it there. 17-4 record. He's fought Oliveira. He's fought Diego Ferreira. He's been in there with some of the best. And like I mentioned, or you sort of mentioned there, he fought for CFFC. So he's someone that, obviously, uh, you know, you sort of have a, a familiarity with as well as far as the area. Uh, how do you feel like you match up against him here? I think great. You know, he's a lot like the other guys I've fought in the sense of, of there's no gaping hole. Like, my last few opponents have been like that, you know, where, and then we're in the UFC, so they're very rarely you're going to find that specialist where you're like, oh, if I can just get him here, I can, you know, clearly put him away or something like that. Um, he's not that guy. You know, he's super well-rounded, very tough, very durable, um, good cardio, good pace, good pressure. But that being said, uh, just from a, a technique standpoint, we really like this matchup on where I, where I match up. And I, I've said this about other opponents, but I think everywhere I can just edge him out just a little bit, you know, and uh, that's what we're ready to do. I, it really has been a huge camp for me fighting another guy that's well-rounded, uh, fighting somebody that's, 
you know, usually I'm the shorter guy going in the fights, and I think we're similar sizes. So uh, that's fun, too, because it's really, you know, I had to change a couple things that I do. I'm usually, usually the guy trying to, you know, fight up to these six-footers and, and bigger. So uh, this is, it's just been a really good camp for me, and uh, my coach has done a tremendous job. You know, my boxing coach, Chris Gallon, and uh, John Salter, like we talked about, especially in the wrestling, has really, really helped me out a ton in this camp. And uh, my head coach, Jeff Jimmo, it's been really, really cool to see uh, it's just, I think it might be because of the timing. I'm the only one really in camp right now. So it's just, I've gotten so much, so much attention and help from him that I feel like I, I'm a whole different fighter going into this fight. I know it's the most cliche thing to say, but um, getting one-on-one with him so much this camp has just been a game changer. So I really think we got the right recipe and uh, I'm excited to go out there and show it. As far as uh, training partners and all that, uh, you sort of mentioned it there a little bit, but uh, who are some of the other guys you get to work with that maybe uh, you didn't mention there as far as uh, bodies in the gym? Yeah, always John Salter, like I said, uh, as a coach and a teammate, you know. Um, but then the guys at Salted Dog Jiu-Jitsu, a big, big help for me for, for all of my camps in the UFC, uh, except for maybe Hubbard because of COVID. He was, uh, we've got a college student that came here, picked his college to train with us, which was awesome, oh, cool. uh, Wyatt Hopkins. And he came in a couple years ago and was like a very tough training partner, very fun, was like a purple belt and had wrestled, you know, like, oh, this guy's scrambling. When he gets a little bit of strength, he's going to be a really good training partner, you know, and uh, he has hit that stride. So he's been an awesome. I mean, it's so funny when you're like, oh, who'd you use to get ready for Jim Miller, who has some of the most submissions in UFC history? You're like, oh, a 21-year-old college student. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I couldn't do what I was able to do in the fight to him, you know. So big thanks to him. Um, everybody at Fitness Edge MMA, uh, Cody Jones, Jordan Weeks are always my training partners out of camp and stuff, but those guys are like 6'2", six, 6'3". Six, so, uh, you know, some other guys that are shorter, better inside fighters have had to pick up the slack. So my buddy Brendan Hyde is a great, great fighter, and uh, uh, Zach DeLeon, who's cornered me before, a great, great teammate. And now up at Jimmo, I've uh, been training a lot with Nick Rodriguez, who is somebody that belongs at this level and just hasn't gotten that shot in the Contender Series or Ultimate Fighter or just a short-notice UFC fight yet. But he's 5-1 and one fighting out of Ring of Combat and has beaten some guys that have gone on to be in the Contender Series and stuff. So I'm sure his time is coming. Uh, he's been a tremendous help. And then uh, Brian Barbarena as well up at Jimmo, uh, courtesy, black eye, courtesy of him. Just a tough, tough son of a gun, man. Love that guy. And uh, everyone's been such a big help. There's so many that I haven't named, but uh, those are the ones like specifically have been really, really helpful. I don't think I've asked you this before. Kind of a random question. Do you think Bam Bam looks a little bit like Luke Thomas? He's got the beard and, and everything. Uh, if, you, if you see him side by side, <laughs> yeah, even how I they talk a bit, they kind of sound and look alike a little bit. I've, I, I told him that he thought it was funny. <laughs> yeah. So. He's like the super blue collar Luke Thomas. Exactly. You know, if Luke Thomas like went in the woods for like six months and then came back, I think he would be yep. Brian Barberine. I don't know. So. Absolutely. Yeah, I can see this in my, especially that big old beard. Yeah, exactly. Um, Cornerman, who's going to be in the cage with you that night? Uh, the same as most of the fights. You know, it'll be uh, John, John Salter, Jeff Jimmo, and boxing coach Chris Gout. It's just such a good such a good crew to go out there with. You know, they just uh, – I, I, really, I love all three of those guys. You know, and I really think um, – that's what's important is like having that trust in them uh, to blindly listen. Cause sometimes, you know, and they trust me too. That's the best part is like, we always kind of have that conversation of like, Hey, look, like John always has this too. It'll be like, man, like I know we're going to say some stuff, but remember you're in the driver's seat, but I feel the same way about them. Like, Hey, like remember I'm in the driver's seat. You're seeing stuff that I can't. So um, having that blind faith where if they say to do it, I'm going to do it, you know? And, uh, that's the rapport that I built with these guys over these couple of years has been fantastic. And I've seen it watching some of the fights back. Like I've heard, you know, uh, coach Jim, you know, right hand and I just throw it right away. You're like, Oh, I didn't even see if I was clear to do it. Like I just listened to these guys. So, uh, yeah, that's our, that's our team. And that's who I'm sticking with for, for as long as I possibly can. I know you feel like you're going to win on October 2nd. How do you see yourself winning? How's the fight playing out at UFC fight night? Well, I always give the answer because I sleep prepare for is just that knockdown drag out dog fight but like my last I'd say two fights for sure with uh Hubbard and Miller this is that fight that I think it's going to unfold you know uh with Miller it wasn't the exciting one we pictured but it was one of those tooth and nail you know it was very fought in close quarters and I like, couldn't see what was going on but like I'm laying on him in the third round he's elevating and like it's hard to see that stuff but uh, I think it's a similar thing where it could end up being super exciting but it is going to be that that dog fight fighting for each position you know he's so well-rounded uh on the fence especially uh, in the boxing and, and, and on the ground. He's you know, a very credentialed jiu-jitsu practitioner. So um, I really see it being one of those dog fights where you're like, it's going to take place everywhere. We're going to have to beat him everywhere. Um, and it's one of those where I think he's a little bit of a momentum fighter where if you let him get ahead a little bit, he'll take it and run. So I've just got to be focused for 15 minutes and, and, and 
plan to get my hand raised by outworking him at every single position, you know. But that being said, if I'm able to land a shot or find a neck or out position on the ground, I always look for the finish. You know, I think that's, that's something that can definitely be said for me, uh, whether it comes or not. But we're ready to deliver for 15 minutes. Where does a win put you? Does this get you in the rankings now? Because you've been on a nice roll here, especially a finish over a guy like Jared Gordon, who's pretty notable in the division. Do you feel like this is the one that gets you in there? I don't think so. And not because Jared's not great. I just think, I don't think that's going to be my path. You know, and I'm not worried about it. I really, I, I say it, but I truly don't care. You know, um, I, I said it last time at media day, I think was like, if I win this fight, good things are going to happen for me. Opportunity wise, financial, I mean, good things are going to happen for my family. If I go out there and do my job, you know, so that, that's what I'm worried about. Um, but I think I'm just in the middle of the road in the middle of the road right now. And so is Jared. That's why we're fighting is to figure out who's going to go up from here and who's going to have to fight their way back. But I'm not too concerned about it. You know, there's so many, so many prospects who are more entertaining on the microphone and, and, and have bigger social media following. So, um, like a guy that comes to mind at featherweight, who's kind of in similar boat, but has won a lot more fights than me is Arnold Allen. You know, Mm -hmm. that guy's beaten everybody and looked super impressive, but you know, I think he's a regular, regular person, you know, and, uh, we're not dressing up like cartoon characters and, uh, (laughs) taking crazy pictures on Instagram. So, you know, it's not going to happen overnight. He's had to kind of work his way up. But what's awesome by, is, about that is by the time he's fighting the top five guys, he'll have 10, 12 fights in the UFC, and, and he'll be making a good living for himself. You know, So at the end of the day, what's going to be is going to be, but uh, I need to go out there and beat Jared, and good things will happen for my family. And, and speaking of which, uh, how many more fights do you have left in your contract? I was trying to remember. I'm actually on my first first one of the new contract. Oh, yeah, awesome. So, so was that, that, that was signed after fight. the last fight, right? I was trying to remember? Yes. Yeah, super fortunate. Really excited about that. Uh, you know, like I said, the language in the contract always has that little clause that's like, hey, you can, can go on out dump here you second, if, yeah, if you want. You, yeah. It makes you feel good to be on my second one and, and you know, people always complain about fighter pay, but I feel like I feel like I'm super lucky to, to be in a spot where, you know, I can do this for a full time living and provide for my family. So I'm super pumped about that because, you know, that first contract is a little shaky, but you know, people complain, but it should be. You know, we're trying to prove if we can be here or not for a little while and uh, you know, super blessed that I was able to prove that and now I got to keep on keep on proving it does that add a bit more to this fight knowing that you have a new contract and the UFC's behind you and they obviously want to see you do well and I'm assuming it's four fights right it is four fights yeah um it doesn't it doesn't really change it here or there you know but it is nice to know god forbid you know there's so much stress that goes in the fights and I think people always argue that the show win and all that stuff is like super important to motivate fighters but you've never been in a fight and thought about like, oh, man, uh, I could just quit right now because I got my guaranteed money. You know, no one ever, like, we're fighters. We don't think like that. So, but that being said, the fact that everything kind of goes up, it, it, it takes a little bit of anxiety out going, okay, God forbid I get cut in the first round and it's ruled as a loss. At least I made enough living to, to I'm okay, you know. That's the stuff that I think is, is super important. Or I make weight and my opponent, you know, gets sick and goes to the hospital, God forbid. Okay, well, I'll be all right. You know, that's the stuff that I think is important. Um I'm not too worried about where they see me or anything like that because I could put out a tweet tomorrow and they're like, you know what? We don't like this guy. Mm-hmm. So uh, I just got to worry about, about training hard, showing up and, and getting the job done. And doing media, man. Always a great interview. Appreciate it. And dare I say you're a little bit underrated, if anything, when it comes to the analysis and all that stuff. So maybe there's a desk job <laughs> for you in the future. But I uh, uh, appreciate the time. Anyone you want to thank? Any sponsors? Any social media? I'll give you the last word. Well, we talked about uh, my coaches. So obviously them in all three gyms that I train at. Uh, Super fortunate to have them. And like I said, if I had it my way, I was saying that to my wife today. I'm like, if I had it my way, I would fight. Ideally, in a perfect world, I win every time. They get on the microphone, everybody claps for them. <laughs> I go home and dump the paycheck on the table for my wife, and I get to do what I love, which is train every day. You know, uh, That's a perfect world for me. So I want them to get a lot of credit because they're just, they've done a lot, a lot for me. You know, um, But then just my wife and my daughter, you know, they've been fantastic. And today's actually my wife's birthday, her 30th. So, uh, Happy really, birthday really to her. just super fortunate to have her, man. She's just, uh, God's blessed me with a very, very strong, fantastic woman. And like, I was thinking about it today on the drive. It was like, man, like she's the definition of unconditional love. Like, especially even now, like, you know, on the way up, she supported me a ton, but now we're here. I still got to travel to train. Like I did, I still got to train the same way I did on the regional scene, just as hungry and just as gone as much. And, uh, never complains and just always super gracious and really, really supportive. And I just love her to death. And my daughter has just changed my whole life and flipped it upside down. and made me realize that none of this really matters in the sense of outside opinion or do they think it's boring or did I, you know, do people think I'm as good as I thought I was or better? It doesn't matter. I just got to get home to her and provide for her and, 
and show her what hard work can do. That's why I want to be the champ, you know. It could be for other reasons, but I, I have no desire for any of those, like, worldly things other than to show my daughter what you can do with hard work, you know. So uh, just them and everybody that supports me, man. It's been awesome. A couple sponsors, just Slicers Hoagies, has been really helpful. Um, they always sponsor us, and they're great, but they also make the best hoagie in Florida. So if you're ever down that way, everyone should check that out. They're also working on a way where they can ship, which is well worth your time and your dime. But, uh yeah, just everybody that supported me, man. Myrtle Beach Spine Center has always kept me healthy. My brother, Conquer Movement Physical Therapy, um, has been super helpful these last two camps since he moved down here. So I'm just spoiled. I'm getting kept healthy, fed, sponsored, and, uh, and loved. So it's been great. <laughs>